Hi, uh, welcome to the session on uh, CMA part 2, Financial Decision Making. In this session, we will discuss about uh, CVP analysis. CVP analysis, cost, volume, profit analysis. Cost, volume, profit analysis. The, the main objective of cost, value, profit analysis is profit maximization. How to maximize the profit? You know that profit is the excess of revenues over the expenses. Excess of revenues over the expenses is called profit. So to in maximize the profit, what tactics are to be used? What should be the sales volume? What is the price? What is the cost structure? Like what is a controllable cost? what is non-controllable cost. So we study in detail that how to maximize the profit. The ultimate objective of cost volume profit analysis is how to maximize the profit. So for this, we conduct an analysis based on the sales volume, which we can make, the setting up of the selling price and dealing with the different types of costs. So we can say that you as a management accountant, you can use this powerful tool helping the management in making decisions about marketing, production, further investment, and any other financing divisions, decisions. So here, the ultimate objective is to maximize a profit. In this, at least to reach a no profit, no loss area, how many units are to be sold? We calculate and give that if you sell say 10,000 units, there will be no profit, no loss, which is called break even. So in how many months in a year, you can sell 10,000 units, three months. Oh, rest of nine months will enjoy the profits. So we need to find out the break even uh, sales. To, to know that to what extent to what extent we can you know use that period to break even <clears throat> how many units that must be sold to earn a desired profit the management may have a kind of uh, a 20 percent return on investment so to own 20 percent return on investment how many units are to be sold so that it can be used in our budgeting marketing etc if a firm invests further certain amount, whether we can reduce the cost, like we are automati automating certain activities. Uh, earlier it was a labor intensive activity. Most of the works were carried out with the help of human resources. Now we are automating, like we are using ERP instead of uh, seeing standalone systems, or we are uh, spending good amount on uh, advertisement to improve the sales or we are using a kind of robust system in our uh, supply chain to reduce the cost but whether it is increasing the profit or not this type of decisions uh, can be taken in a cost volume profit analysis so mostly you have a kind of interactive based questions in the exam so do not learn as a formula based so learn as you know the the practical based that how a firm can enjoy good amount of profits with de decisions for this to begin with first of all we need to know the types of costs as we know that uh, revenues minus the expenses will give us profit so when we understand what are the different types of expenses then we'll understand whether a particular cost is a controllable or non-controllable controllable or non-controllable or a mixture of the same to some extent we can control to some extent we cannot yeah so let us detail uh, let us you know find the different types of costs in detail the costs are broadly classified into variable costs fixed costs and mixed costs mixed cost is nothing but semi-variable or 
semi fixed cost it is a combination of both fixed and variable to some extent we have fixed cost to some extent we have variable cost such a cost is called as mixed cost so let us find out first of all what are variable cost and what are fixed cost variable cost is a cost which changes according to the activity level it fluctuates according to the activity activity in a sense say for example you spend $5 $5 per meter per meter this is a material we use in a, a uh, say for example this is a material we use in a garment manufacturing a shirt requires say for example a shirt requires say for example 3 meters of cloth so one shirt requires 3 meters of cloth 3 times 5 dollars 15 dollars material cost to produce or to you know stitch one shirt one shirt when you when you manufacture when you say stitch 10 shirts 10 shirts times 3 meters of cloth you need 30 meters of cloth times 5 dollars each so the material cost is going to be 150 dollars whereas when you plan for stitching say 20 shirts 20 shirts times each shirt takes 3 meters of cloth 60 meters of cloth is required at the rate of five dollars it will be three hundred dollars see as the activity changes from 10 to 20 cost changes from 150 to 300 so variable cost change when the activity changes activity is nothing but the production capacity what number of units you produce what number of units you produce and what is the cost on that yeah so likewise when you produce less five shirts only five times three meters of cloth okay 15 meters of cloth is required each meter we are spending five dollars so the material cost is going to be 75 when activity level decreases the cost will also decrease when activity level increases the cost will also increase such a cost is called as variable cost it just changes according to the activity so if you mention on a graph quantity on you know horizontal axis and dollar amount on vertical axis as the quantity increases cost will increase so this is the variable cost line as the quantity increases consumption increases cost will increase but if you observe here though the total variable cost is increasing but the cost per unit will remain same here see five dollars five dollars five dollars so what do we understand now variable cost as an amount is variable variable cost as an amount is variable but per unit is constant in all the cases on all the three examples you can find that the per unit cost is five dollars only whereas the total variable cost is changing from 75 to 150 150 to 300 so what we understand here is that the variable cost as an amount changes varies according to the activity level but per unit cost will remain same variable cost line see in uh, all the uh, uh, activity levels it was five dollars only five dollars only so per unit it is same so variable costs per unit do not change as the activity increases or decreases say for example you have um, a canteen and the meal cost is say three dollars per person three dollars per person there are two thousand passengers 
to be sold. So two times two thousand times three dollars. It is going to be six thousand. If the passengers increase from two thousand to two thousand five hundred at the rate of three dollars, it is going to be seven thousand five hundred dollars. If the passengers increase to three thousand times three dollars, it is going to be nine thousand dollars. See. Variable cost as an amount is increasing as the activity increases, decreasing as the activity decreases, but per unit cost will remain same. Per unit cost will remain same. The variable cost examples include direct material, direct labor, like uh, some um, indirect material consumption, etc., that changes any cost, any cost which changes according to the activity level, you can define it as the variable cost. Fixed cost. Fixed cost remain constant within a relevant range. A relevant range means, say, for example, you hired a factory building, you hired a factory building, the $60,000 annual rent. So the rent of a factory building is $60,000 per annum. So $5,000 per month, per month. So when you take January, February, March, etc., each month, the Rental cost is $5,000. This $5,000 does not change based on the production. Whether you produce 2,000 units or 1,500 units, the landlord will not increase, decrease price based on the number of units you produce. Fixed cost as an amount is constant, but it is not constant forever. It is constant within a relevant range. Relevant range means like per year, per year, per annum. So next year rent may be of 62,000 or 65,000. For this year, it is constant. That's called relevant range. The relevant range can be a, a time period or a production capacity. Like in a, in a year, you can produce 300,000 units. So you have a capacity to produce only 300,000 units. So you hired a factory building of $60,000 rent. But when you have a good demand and you are increasing the production from 300,000 to 500,000. So you'll have to hire one small space. You'll have to hire one more missionary. You'll have to hire one more fact production manager. So their rents and their salaries will also go up. So when activity level changes fixed cost will change if the relevant range crosses say for example 300000 is a fixed amount 300000 units production even if you produce 295000 units even if you produce 275000 units the fixed cost will remain same but activity level changes from 300000 to 500000 means what you are going out of the budgeted capacity in that case, your fixed cost may respond, but within the relevant range, fixed cost remains same. You see the fixed cost here, whether you produce or not monthly, the rental amount is going to be 5,000. Each month it is 5,000 in my example. So this is called fixed cost line. Fixed cost as an amount is constant, but per unit is variable. Fixed cost as an amount is constant, but per unit is variable. Like in the previous example, say rent, January, rent was 5,000. February, rent was 5,000. But in January, we produced, we produced 4,000 units. And in February, we produced 2,500 units. See? Fixed cost as an amount is constant. Fixed. 
But fixed cost, when you calculate per unit, $5,000 divided by $4,000. It is $1.25 per unit. Fixed cost in the month of February, $5,000 divided by 2,500 units. It is $2. So what we understand here, fixed cost per unit is variable. But fixed cost as an amount is fixed. This is the reason why most of the manufacturers, what they do is when you negotiate the when you negotiate about the price, they negotiate with the quantity. You buy more units, I will give you at a less price because they get benefit from the fixed cost. See, fixed cost per unit on rental cost was two dollars. If if you he produces five thousand units here, it would have been reduced to one dollar only. In the month of February, say a customer comes. Presently, you are producing 2,500 units. A new customer comes and buys another 2,500 units. So the fixed cost is now going to be reduced to $1. It was $2. So there is a direct saving of $1 to the manufacturer. So you may, you may give $20 or 20 cents discount. Still, you can make profit, additional profit. So manufacturers like to make use of the fixed cost per unit by producing more units within the relevant range. There are some costs called mixed cost which have a flavor of both fixed and variable. So to some extent there are they are fixed. Usually the utility charges are mixed costs. There may be a fixed service fee like say $250 per month plus per kilowatt hour consumed, like say $2 per kilowatt. In a month, we consumed 1,200 hours of you know, electricity. So in this case, mixed cost is going to be $250 fixed amount plus variable cost of 2,400. It is going to be 2,650. This is called mixed cost. Mixed cost is the combination of both fixed and variable. Let me give you one more example. Like a sales manager is appointed with a $1,000 fixed salary per month plus $2 per unit sold. $2 per unit sold. So in a month, Say for example, January, he sold 1,500 units. 1,500 units. So, salary fixed 1,000. Salary fixed 1,000 plus two dollars per unit sold, and he sold 1,500. So this is called fixed portion, and this is called variable portion. So here mixed cost equals to 1000 fixed plus 3000 variable. This gives you 4000 mixed cost. So 1000 fixed and the remaining portion is variable. So fixed and variable, it is depicted on the graph this way. Okay, you, your amount is fixed by 1000 and because you sold 1500 units, the, there is a variable portion. This is variable portion and this is fixed portion. So mixed cost is a combination of both fixed and variable. Same cost, we have two flavor. Actually, fixed cost plus variable cost is total cost. But here we say sales manager salary. One, one cost has two flavors. Such a cost is called as mixed cost. Now we understand what is fixed cost what is variable cost and what is mixed cost. Just I want to tell you one thing that there is no mixed cost assumption in our CVP analysis. The class, the cost will be either classified into fixed and or variable but no mixed cost. So just only for your knowledge we discuss about mixed cost but there is no assumption of mixed cost in CVP analysis.
Now we understand what is a fixed cost, what is a variable cost and what is a mixed cost. A mixed cost as we know that some portion is fixed and some portion is variable. So it's a combination of both fixed and variable. You can experience this in a taxi fare. Taxi fare is fixed to some extent and once you reach a certain um, kilometers level, uh, um, the variable cost will begin from there. Usually utility charges, salesman commission with a fixed salary, yeah, uh, taxi fare, these are all you know, uh, mixed cost. Relevant range, we use a topic um, uh, called relevant range. It is just nothing but the, the production capacity or the time period within which certain costs remain constant. It can be a time period, it can be a maximum production capacity. Say for example, you estimate a cost of say $10,000 per year, per year, so one year. Say, we can say that this is a rent. So in one year, as you entered into a rental contract by paying $10,000, so we can say that one year is a relevant range. Next year, you can't say that the rental cost is the same $10,000. Within a relevant range, it is $10,000. Say you uh, have some kind of uh, fixed cost in your factory like uh, property taxes of the factory, uh, insurance of the factory, uh, depreciation of the equipment, etc. is say $150,000. This $150,000 of fixed cost in your factory estimated at a production capacity of 200,000 units. See the first relevant range I gave in example for time period. Time period. Second example, the insurance, depreciation, property taxes of your factory building, etc. are estimated to be $150,000 provided the maximum production capacity is 200,000 units. It means that even if you produce 192,000 units, the fixed cost will remain same 150,000. 175,000 units, fixed cost will remain same 150,000. But you receive heavy orders and your production capacity is increased from 200,000 to 300,000 units, there will be a response in your fixed cost because activity level, relevant range disturbed. When relevant range is disturbed, your fixed cost will also be disturbed. You will hire one more equipment. You will hire one more production manager. You will hire some more space, extra space to produce extra goods. So obviously your fixed cost will respond. It won't be 150,000 because your relevant range is disturbed. So what we can say is that, whatever the fixed cost so far we learned, Fixed costs remain constant within a relevant range. A time period or a maximum production capacity, the costs are going to be same. The relevant range changes, say 10,000 units was your relevant range, changed to 15,000. Your fixed cost will respond from 40,000 to 80,000. When relevant range increased to 25,000, may increase to some extent. So when you give a definition of fixed cost, you can say that fixed costs remain constant within a relevant range. Now after you understand the uh, uh, total cost combination of both fixed and variable, total cost is a combination of both fixed and variable, let us not use mixed cost here, fixed and variable cost total is called total cost is deducted from total revenue generated will give you income. So your profit equals to total revenue minus total cost. Now let us elaborate this equation. Total revenue equals to number of units you sold times the selling price per unit. Clear? So $50 is the selling price per unit and number of used units is sold is 1000 so your sales are going to be say $50,000 revenues total cost say we have a fixed cost of $10,000 and the variable cost is say for example per unit it is per unit it is $2 
So two dollars into how many units we sold here? One thousand. One thousand. So the total cost is going to be total variable cost two thousand dollars. Total fixed cost ten thousand dollars. That is or uh, twelve thousand. So your total cost is going to be or uh, twelve thousand dollars, which is deducted from your revenues and giving us a profit of $38,000. So your calculation should go like this. Let me use the same numbers in the equation to get this. Net profit equals to the price sales price into quantity used minus variable cost into quantity sold minus fixed cost equals to how many units we sold, how many units we sold that is uh, uh, $50 selling price times 1000 minus variable cost $2 times 1000 this is very minus fixed cost fixed cost was $10,000 see this is the sales portion this is the variable cost portion and this is the fixed cost portion see our equation S minus V minus F equals to profit S minus V minus F equals to profit and it can be simplified because 1000 is common that is 1000 units into selling price per unit minus variable cost per unit variable cost per unit minus fixed cost will give you a profit that is 38,000 48,000 minus 10,000 38,000 dollars so we are going to give use this equation S minus V minus F is going to give us profit. S minus V minus F is going to give us profit. This is called marginal costing equation. Marginal costing equation. So in a marginal costing equation in a tabular format sales minus variable cost will give us contribution margin minus fixed cost will give us net income so what do we understand here the contribution and fixed cost when we deduct fixed cost from the contribution you are getting profit we know that the fixed cost remain constant yeah i want more profit fixed cost remain constant so increase your contribution increase your contribution how to increase your contrib contribution by controlling the variable cost or by increasing the revenues so s minus v gives us contribution contribution is the difference between sales and variable cost contribution minus fixed cost gives us profit so higher the contribution higher the profit because we can't do anything in the fixed cost as the name says it is fixed so improve your contribution by controlling the variable cost by improving the revenues. This is called marginal costing equation. S minus V equals to contribution minus fixed cost equals to profit. S minus V equals to C minus F equals to P. S minus V alone is C, contribution margin. Higher the contribution, higher the profit. Higher the contribution, higher the profit. Now let us uh, concentrate on some assumptions what we use in our CVP analysis. Remember CVP analysis objective is to maximize the profit. Cost volume profit analysis. Cost volume profit analysis objective is to maximize the profit. So in this CVP analysis we have some assumptions. The assumptions begin with the costs. The cost in a, our company are going to be classified into only variable and fixed but no mixed cost. So if it is a cost it is going to be either variable cost or fixed cost but no mixed cost. Okay. So we will have only two types of costs variable and fixed cost. When you add them you will get total cost. And here the CVP relationships are linear, linear wide range of production and sales it means that whatever you produced are going to be 
sold. You sold 1000 units because you produced 1000 units. So what does it mean? All the units produced are going to be sold. There is no question of opening stock and closing stock. You don't have any inventories at the beginning and ending. This is the assumption of CVP analysis. So in our CVP analysis, you will never find any beginning inventory and in ending inventory. Whatever units are produced or sold. One important point here in CVP analysis is that we assume that the selling price will remain same. Unit variable cost will remain same. Total fixed cost will remain same within a relevant range. If your relevant range, if your analysis, your analysis is for one year, entire one year, your selling price is going to be $50 only. Your variable cost per unit is going to be $20 only. And your total fixed cost is going to be $10,000 only. So these are the assumptions we have within a relevant range regarding the selling price per unit, variable cost per unit, and the total fixed costs. This is one drawback in CVP analysis and also the advantage in CVP analysis. Drawback is that as just we fix the variable cost is 20 or selling price is 50, it doesn't mean that it has to be maintained even if the market is in, a, in your favor or in your not in your favor. Though the fixed costs are same, sometimes because of various reasons like insurance, your insurance gets expired during the year. So insurance costs may go up. Rental cost, the tenancy contracts end in the month of July. The rental cost may go up. So there is a flaw. There is a drawback. But the assumption is that they are remain same within a relevant range. Selling price per unit is constant. Costs are linear, uh, linear and uh, divided into variable and fixed only. No mixed cost. And in the case of multi products, multi product means company A sells a uh, company sells A, B, C different types of products. Different types of products: laptops, mobile phones, televisions. Laptops, mobile phone, televisions. My company sells three different types of products. The sales mix is constant. Say for example, if I sell 100 laptops, I sell 500 mobile phones and 400 televisions. This is called mix. You can see the total quantity here, 1000. So 10%, 50% and 40%. So if I tell I sell 1000 pieces of laptops, televisions and mobile phones together, 10% of this is from laptop and 50% is from um, uh, mobile phones and 40% is from, that's an assumption. This is an assumption in CVP analysis in the case of multi-product companies. Then inventories do not change as we discussed, there will be no opening and no closing stock inventories. And just re to recall, contribution, remember contribution is the difference between sales and variable cost. Let us assume that the selling price per unit is $100 and um, variable cost per unit is say $60. So contribution is going to be $40. S minus V equals to C. Contribution is the difference between sales and variable cost and it is profit subject to fixed cost say for example you sold 2000 units so your total contribution is going to be eighty thousand dollars eighty thousand dollars and you have a fixed cost of say for example fifty thousand dollars fifty thousand dollars so his profit is going to be thirty thousand profit is going to be 30,000. If you control this cost from 60 to say for example 50, see selling price will remain same, your variable cost decreased by $10, your contribution per unit will increase to $50 now. From $40 it is going to be $50 because you control your variable cost. You sold same 2000 units and your contribution, revised contribution is going to be $100,000. 
your fixed cost remains same, fifty thousand dollars. So your profit will increase to fifty thousand dollars because you saved some amount here. You saved some amount here. No, you just increase the selling price to one ten dollars. Variable cost remains same. Variable cost remains same, but you increase the selling price. Say for example, minus sixty dollars variable cost, giving fifty dollars. It will give you the same. So higher the contribution, higher the profit. S minus V. First of all, the C should cover your fixed cost to get some profit. So higher the contribution here, higher the profit. Because fixed cost remain constant, so companies try to maximize its contribution always. Sales minus variable cost give us contribution. Contribution minus fixed costs give us operating income. So try to have more contribution to get more profits. Contribution margin can also be expressed in per unit or percentage, like here. Sales price, selling price per unit is hundred dollars. Variable cost per unit is say sixty dollars. So your contribution per unit is forty dollars. This is called unit contribution. Unit contribution. So every unit will give us a contribution of forty dollars. If the same is expressed in percentage, it is called as profit volume ratio or contribution margin ratio. Contribution margin ratio equals to contribution over sales times hundred. It tells us that what is the percentage of contribution included in the selling price. Let me show you here. Contribution is forty dollars. Selling price is hundred dollars times hundred to get the percentage. It is forty percent. What does it mean? If your selling price is say hundred dollars, your contribution is going to be forty dollars. When you say forty percent here, so automatically your variable cost is going to be sixty percent, right? When you say contribution is forty percent, your variable cost will become sixty percent. So it is going to be sixty dollars. Okay. Say your contribution is fifty percent. So fifty dollars for every hundred dollars of sales. So your variable cost is going to be only fifty. Your variable cost is seventy. Your contribution is going to be thirty. So when you say contribution is say thirty percent, your variable cost is. Seventy percent. When you say variable cost is eighty percent, your contribution is going to be twenty percent. So S includes V. S includes V. When you remove V from S, you will get C. C V was eighty percent. So C is twenty percent. So if you control your variable cost, your contribution will increase. This is what explained by the contribution margin. Contribution margin is usually expressed in percentage or in a dollar amount. Now let us see that the selling price of a product is hundred dollars and variable cost is seventy dollars. So we can now say here sales minus variable cost that is thirty dollars. Sales minus variable cost, but if you see contribution margin ratio or profit volume ratio, it is going to be contribution divided by sales times hundred. That is thirty divided by hundred times hundred, thirty percent. See, variable cost is seventy percent. If you observe here, when variable cost is seventy percent, your contribution margin ratio is thirty percent. When your contribution margin ratio is thirty percent, your variable cost percentage is seventy percent. As you know that the contribution is in dollar amounts that usually gives us in a 
uh, per unit. And contribution margin ratio gives us in percentage that what amount of what is the percentage of contribution that is being included in uh, sales price or sales. If you know the variable cost, you can know the contribution margin. Say variable cost percentage is in the previous example 70%. So obviously the contribution margin is 30%. If you reduce the variable portion to 65, your contribution will increase to 35. Yeah. So try to improve your contribution margin ratio that will give you a saving in your profits. Like here, sales, total sales, not the selling price per unit here, total sales are 100,000, total variable cost are 37,500. So contribution here is 62,500, whereas contribution margin is 62.5%. 62.5%, 62,500 divided by sales times 100. 62.5%. This is uh, nothing but again, see, variable cost is 37.5%. 37,500 divided by 100,000. So, contribution margin ratio is expressed in percentage contribution over sales times 100, that is 62.5%. Now, the next uh, important topic is the break even point. What is a break-even point? Break-even point is an activity level at which, at which the company will neither get profit nor loss. Okay, it doesn't incur any loss, doesn't get any profit. In other words, you can say that the total cost become equivalent to total revenue. So when you deduct total cost from your sales, you don't get profit, you don't incur losses. So it's a no profit, no loss activity level. No profit, no loss activity level. At which the total cost become equivalent to the total sales. Why should we calculate break even point? Why should we calculate break even point? Once you know the break even point, we estimate that how long it will take to sell these many units. Okay, let us discuss in detail by having a formula to calculate break even point here. So sales minus variable cost minus fixed cost equals to zero, no profit, no loss. Such, a le such an activity level is called as break even point. Break even point in units, break even point in units and break even point in dollars will apply two formulae one break even point in units break even point in units say we have a, a fixed cost we have variable cost and you have sales let us now depict this on the graph to elaborate what is break even point okay as you know that the horizontal axis is used for quantity and Vertical axis is used for dollars. Fixed costs remain constant here. So your fixed cost plus variable cost will give you total cost. This is the fixed cost portion, which will remain irrespective of, irrespective of the activity level. You can say that this is the fixed cost line. Now fixed cost plus variable cost will give you total cost. See, this portion is fixed cost and variable cost cost is added there it becomes total cost so this is total cost line fixed cost plus variable cost will give you total cost now when you add sales line here sales are increasing here see zero units to so many units at this point at this point the revenue line intersects the total cost line yeah. Okay. This point is called as break even point. Means what? Just draw a line from there to units horizontal line. Say this is 2000 units, which means that if you sell 2000 units, there will be no profit, no loss. Your total cost is recovered from the sales of 
2000 units both fixed and variable cost here if you sell less than 2000 units less than 2000 units will give us loss more than 2000 units will give us profit see less than 2000 units is this area this one this is all loss area see loss is gradually decreasing 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 and you reach the area where loss is vanished but no profit okay see the difference here it is gradually decreasing and you reach a, a stage where there is no loss at all but no profit also and we call it as break even point which is 2000 units if you put little efforts extra you will enter into a profit area this is a profit area so the more you sell here the more you get profit once an angle is formed here once an angle is formed here you will enter into a safety area so each one additional unit sell over and above 2000 units you will enjoy profits and each one unit you sell less than uh, 2000 units you will enter into a loss area this one so once you reach break even point once you reach break even point you put your efforts to sell more and more units that is nothing but putting your efforts to enter into a safety area now here now here this is a loss area this is called break even point and this is a profit area also called as margin of safety margin of safety margin of safety once this angle is formed you will enter into a profit area okay each one unit will sell you uh, will bring you more profit so what do you understand here you understand that this activity level here is 2000 units so if you sell 2000 units there will be no profit no loss say you call your marketing department sales department and other departments concerned that i want to sell 2000 units how many months you take say for example the sales department is sure that this 2000 units can be sold in just two months so january february so your break even period is just two months the remaining 10 months the remaining 10 months march to december you don't have any fixed cost to recover you don't have any fixed cost to recover because already these 2000 units are covering your fixed cost of entire relevant range and the variable cost of 2000 units additionally whatever the unit you sell the additional contribution is the profit every additional unit say for example you sold 2005 units this extra 5000 units over and 5000 5 units over and above break even point will fetch your profit which is equivalent to contribution per unit which is called margin of safety means once you reach break even point whatever the additional units you sell will bring a profit which is equivalent to contribution per unit so number of additional units you sell multiplied by unit contribution will give you profit straight away because there is no fixed cost fixed cost is already recovered from 2000 units this extra 10 units will not have any fixed cost that's called margin of safety so margin of safety equals to the total sales what you sold minus break even sale what's supposed to be sold times contribution per unit more units you sell more contribution you will enjoy your contribution is nothing but profit why because there is no further fixed cost which has been already recovered from 2000 units now let's take an example let's take an example uh, selling price per unit is say hundred dollars variable cost is say eighty dollars 
fixed cost is ten thousand dollars okay this is per unit selling price per unit variable cost per unit now break even point in units how many units are to be sold to be on break even equals to the formula is fixed cost per unit divided by selling price per unit minus variable cost per unit the answer is going to be in units that is how many units are going to be sold so fixed cost ten thousand dollars over hundred dollars minus eighty dollars ten thousand over twenty dollars is going to give you 500 units what does it mean if you if you sell 500 units there will be no profit no loss this is called break even quantity break even quantity means the quantity at which the firm neither enjoys profit nor incurs losses let's see the verification verification whether it's right or not okay sales how many units are you selling 500 units 500 units times hundred dollars per unit it is going to be fifty thousand dollars variable cost 500 units each unit costing eighty dollars that is forty thousand dollars sales minus va uh, variable cost gives us contribution ten thousand dollars minus fixed cost ten thousand dollars no profit no loss profit or loss nothing so you just come to know now that if i sell 500 units there will be no profit no loss this 500 units i can sell in two months time the rest of 10 months how it will be like we can sell this 500 units in just two months time now our sales department is promising that we can sell 8000 units in a year in a year we can sell 8000 units what is our break even point at which no profit no loss 500 units so additionally we are selling 7500 units 7500 units into selling price that is how much 100 dollars 7500 into it is going to be 750000 750000 variable cost 7500 into 80 7500 times 80 that is 600000 600,000. Six hundred thousand when you remove from your sales one fifty thousand. Remember, fixed cost is nothing here. Fixed cost was already recorded here. So one fifty thousand is your profit. So once you reach break-even point, any additional unit you sell that will give you a profit any additional unit let me give you same example you calculated break-even point of 500 units remember that selling price was hundred dollars and variable cost was eighty dollars you sold 501 unit the actual sale is say 501 unit you sold additionally one unit extra so one unit into 100 minus 80 so you are getting additionally $20 no fixed cost therefore $20 is profit you sold say 10 units 10 units 510 minus break-even point so additionally 10 units are sold 10 units times selling price minus variable cost so your profit is going to be $200 because there is no fixed cost to recover so each additional unit you sell additional unit you sell into contribution this is contribution okay say you sold 520 units 
break-even point is 500 units. Additional unit you sell, 20 units. And the contribution here is $20. Just multiply with $20. Your additional profit is $400. Say you sold 495 units, uh, less than break-even point. 500 units supposed to be sold. You sold 495 only. You sold five units less than the break-even point. Less than the break-even point. Each unit is going to give us a profit of $20, but you sold less units, therefore there will be loss of loss of $100. This is going to be loss. Why? Because you sold less than the break-even point. Let me show you here. 495 sales equals to 495 units times $100 that is going to be 49,500 49,000 variable cost you are selling 495 units multiplied by 8 unit $80 495 times $80 is going to give you 39,600 you know variable cost when you deduct this amount from 49,500, you get $9,900. This is called contribution. Minus fixed cost of 10,000, it is $100 loss. Same, 100. Any quantity below the break even point is a loss. Any quantity sold above the break even point is profit subject to the contribution number of units additionally you sold times unit contribution is going to be the profit now in this example we found uh, the break even point uh, in um, dollar amount uh, so quantity quantity but break even point in now let us calculate the break even point in dollar amounts we used one formula break even point in quantity which means how many units are to be sold to reach break even that is fixed cost divided by selling price per unit minus variable cost per unit so you are going to get the answer in units how many units are to be sold the second formula is break even point in dollar amounts means what should be the amount of sale to reach break even point so the formula is going to be fixed cost divided by contribution margin ratio contribution margin ratio the percentage here contribution per unit in the first example okay this will give you the answer in dollar amounts let's take the same example selling price was hundred dollars variable cost was eighty dollars remember fixed cost was ten thousand dollars so when we calculated using this first formula it was ten thousand over hundred minus eighty it was uh, 10,000 divided by 20, 500 units. So if you sell 500 units, there will be no profit, no loss. Let us apply the second formula. We should get in dollar amounts. So first, what you need to do is you need to calculate contribution margin ratio. Contribution margin ratio equals to contribution divided by sales times 100. Contribution. You can see here it is twenty dollars s minus v so 20 divided by sales 100 multiplied by 100 to get percentage which is 20 percent so contribution margin ratio is 20 percent let us apply this in the formula that is fixed cost 10,000 oh it's 10,000 10,000 divided by 20 percent you should use the simple percentage in your calculator please so ten thousand dollars divided by twenty percent you should press, press percentage symbol or you can write point two 
in the denominator. So 10,000 divided by 20 percentage, 20 percent will give you in dollar amounts 50,000. So if your sales are $50,000, there will be no profit and no loss. Even you can cross verify also. See, you calculated in the first formula 500,000 units. 500,000 units are sold at the rate of $100 per unit. So 500,000, oh, sorry, 500 units times $100 will give us the same $50,000. You can calculate like this also. Or you can calculate like this. Sometimes you may not be given in unit wise, unit wise, you may give you sales amount, variable cost amount, fixed cost amount, not per unit as an amount. In that case, the second formula will help you out to cal calculate the break even sales. Okay, let me show you that example as well. Say a firm estimated sales are say 200,000 not per unit, total sales. Variable costs are going to be say $120,000. And the fixed costs are say 30,000. He's asking, what is the break-even sale? Break-even sale in dollar amounts. Remember we have a formula, fixed cost divided by contribution margin ratio. Fixed cost is there. Contribution per unit is not there, but contribution amount is there. This is say for example a monthly sale, monthly sale 200,000, monthly variable cost uh, 120,000, monthly fixed cost 30,000. So first you calculate contribution margin ratio. Contribution margin ratio. Contribution is the difference between sales and variable cost, which is 80,000 here. 200,000 minus 120, so 80,000 divided by sales, C divided by S times 100 into 100 equals to 40%. So your contribution margin ratio is 40%. Now apply in the formula, break even sales equals to fixed cost 30,000 divided by 40% equals to 30,000 divided by 0.4 or 40%, 30,000 divided by 0.4, that equals to $75,000. So if your sales are $75,000, there will be no profit, no loss. No profit, no loss. Let's verify, let's verify. So verification. Your sales are 75,000. Uh, let me calculate directly contribution. Contribution equals to, see, 75,000 sales in which 40% is my contribution. Let me directly calculate. Sales into, you know, contribution margin ratio will give you contribution, direct amount, 0. 0.4 into 75,000. That is going to be 30,000. This sales include 30%, 40% contribution. So 75,000 into 40% is $30,000 minus fixed cost, 30,000. It is proved, it is proved that there is no profit, no loss when the sales are 75,000. Yeah, you can calculate like this as well. When the sales amount and variable cost are given in dollar amounts, but not per unit amounts, yeah. And your verification can begin with a contribution directly. No need to calculate sales and variable cost followed by contribution and all because you have a contribution margin percentage already. This is the end of the session on basic calculations of uh, contribution, contribution margin, break even point in units and break even point in dollar amounts. We'll discuss further on uh, the break even point for multiple products and uh, sales required to earn a desired profit after tax before tax profits.
that's all for now and have a good time see you later